It is important to note that halogens are more electronegative than carbon. This means that halogen atoms have a greater tendency than carbon atoms to attract electron density to themselves. As a result, bonds between carbon and halogen atoms are polar in nature. In the carbon-halogen bond, the carbon atom has a partial positive charge while the halogen atom has a partial negative charge. The atomic radii typically increases down a column. A trend that we observe here from fluorine to iodine. Thus, the carbon-halogen bond length increases as we go from a carbon-fluorine bond to the carbon-iodine bond. As the bond length increases, the bond enthalpy decreases. This means that less energy is required to break the carbon-iodine bond as compared to the carbon-fluorine bond. Additionally, as the halogen atom becomes less electronegative, from fluorine to iodine, the carbon-halogen bond becomes less polar. Let's look at the methods to prepare alkyl halides. There are three main synthetic routes from alcohols, from hydrocarbons and from halogen exchange. We'll discuss each one in turn. Study a variety of reactions. Try to focus on the pattern of change in each type of reaction. Perhaps the best way to prepare alkyl halides is from alcohols as alcohols are readily available. Essentially, turning an alcohol into an alkyl halides requires the substitution of a hydroxyl group of an alcohol by a halogen atom. One way to make alkyl halides from alcohol is through the reaction of alcohols with concentrated halogen acids, which have the general formula HX. Water is the other product of the reaction. In practice, this reaction is used primarily to prepare alkyl chlorides and alkyl bromides. For primary and secondary alcohols, zinc chloride must be used as a catalyst in this reaction. Since tertiary alcohols are more reactive, no catalyst is needed. Tertiary alcohols react with concentrated hydrogen chloride within minutes at room temperature. To prepare alkyl bromides, Boiling with hydrogen bromide is necessary. In general, with a given halo acid, tertiary alcohols are more reactive than secondary alcohols. Primary alcohols are the least reactive. This method is not suitable for the preparation of aryl halides. This is because the carbon-oxygen bond in phenols has a partial double bond character and hence is stronger and difficult to break. Practice is the key to remembering different types of reactions. So, there will be quite a few problems in this module. Try to answer the questions on your own before checking the answers. Here's the first problem. Write the chemical equation for the reaction that takes place between cyclohexanol and hydrogen bromide. Start by drawing out the structural formulae for the reactants. Then substitute the hydroxyl group with the bromine atom to make bromocyclohexane. Water is the other product of the reaction. Alkyl halides can also be prepared for reacting alcohols with phosphorus halides. In practice, 
Phosphorus tribromide is the most common phosphorus halide used. A general equation for a reaction between an alcohol and a phosphorus trihalide is shown here. Note that the hydroxyl group is substituted with the halogen atom. The other product of the reaction, phosphorus acid, is water soluble and can be removed by washing the alkyl halide with water. The variation of this same basic approach uses phosphorus pentachloride to convert an alcohol into an alkyl chloride. Sometimes these reactions are carried out by generating either phosphorus tribromide or phosphorus triiodide in situ. That is, making them right in the reaction missile. This is done by adding red phosphorus and either bromine or iodine to the reaction mixture. The substitution reaction is represented here with the reaction conditions written over the arrow. An alternative approach to make alkyl fluorides from alcohols is to use thionyl chloride SOCl2 as a reagent. This reaction is used mainly to prepare primary and secondary alkyl chlorides. Thionyl chloride is preferred because the other products of the reaction, SO2 and HCl, are gases at room temperature and therefore can be easily separated from the alkyl chloride. Let's practice. What is the major monohalo product for the reaction shown here? You should recognize this type of reaction, a secondary alcohol reacting with thionyl chloride. One chlorine atom will replace the hydroxyl group to make two chloropropane. Sulfur dioxide and hydrogen chloride are the other products of the reaction. Now, write a balanced equation showing the formation of the monohalo product when ethanol reacts with phosphorus tribromide. Start by writing out the formulae for the reactants. You should recognize the pattern. An alcohol reacts with a phosphorus halide to make an alkyl halide. So, the monohalo product is bromoethane. Phosphorus acid is the other product. Be sure to balance the equation. Alkyl halides can also be prepared by free radical halogenation of alkenes. The general equation is shown here. You can think of it as the substitution of a hydrogen atom by a halogen atom. The free radical chlorination or bromination of alkanes gives a mixture of isomeric mono and polyhaloalkenes, which is difficult to separate as pure compounds. Hence, this method is not suitable for the laboratory preparation of pure haloalkanes. Let's apply our knowledge. 2-methylpropane shown here is reacted with chlorine. What are the two possible monochloro products for this reaction? Note that in 2-methylpropane, we have a tertiary hydrogen as well as several equivalent primary hydrogens. Replacing the tertiary hydrogen produces 2-chloro-2-methylpropane or tertiary butyl chloride. Replacing one of the primary hydrogen yields 1-chloro-2-methylpropane or isobutyl chloride. Alkanes can be used as starting material to make alkyl halides. There are two main routes, the addition of hydrogen halides and the addition of halogens. Let's consider the addition of hydrogen halides to alkanes. The general reaction is shown here. When an alkane is reacted with the hydrogen halide, the hydrogen and halogen atoms 
attach at the location of the double bond. The resulting product has all single bonds. If the alkane is not symmetrical, then there are two possible products from the addition reaction. We can use Markovnikov's rule to predict which product will be more prevalent. According to Markovnikov's rule, the negative part of the addendum, that is halogen in the present case, preferentially adds to the less hydrogenated doubly bonded carbon atom. Let's work through this problem together. 2-methylpropane reacts with hydrogen chloride. What are the two main possible products of the reaction? Identify the major product. Start by drawing out the structure for 2-methylpropane. Note that it is not symmetric. One carbon atom in the double bond is bonded with two other carbon atoms, while the other carbon is bonded with two hydrogen atoms. Two products are possible as shown here. The top structure is the major product, according to Markovnikov's rule, as it put the added halogen on the carbon atom in the double bond attached to fewer hydrogen atoms. The lower structure is the minor product. If alkenes are reacted with halogens, vicinal dihalides are produced. Usually, these reactions use either chlorine or bromine. The general equation is shown here. Notice that halogen atoms attach to the carbon atoms in the double bond of the alkene and so the halogen atoms bond to adjacent carbons. The addition reaction of bromine in CCl4 to alkene forms the basis for an experimental procedure to detect double bonds in molecules. Combine bromine in CCl4 and the unknown compound. If the reddish-brownish color bromine disappears, then this is good evidence for the presence of double bonds. No change in color would indicate the absence of double bonds. Try this problem on your own. Write the product of the reaction when cyclopentene is reacted with chlorine. Start by drawing the structural formula for cyclopentene. The chlorine atoms attach at the location of the double bond, resulting in the saturated compound with no multiple bonds. Although we didn't discuss the mechanism of this reaction, it turns out that the halogen atoms attach to the opposite faces of the double bond to give a trans structure. Halogens are more electronegative than carbon. Part 2 You may have noticed that most reactions discussed so far are not typically used to prepare alkyl iodides or alkyl fluorides. In many cases, this is because the reactions are thermodynamically inferable with iodine. Instead, halogen exchange is a more reliable route to prepare alkyl iodides. In the Finkelstein reaction, alkyl fluorides or alkyl bromides are reacted with sodium iodide in dry acetone. The resultant alkyl iodide is easily separated from the sodium halide salt that precipitates out. The general equation is shown here. Halogen exchange also provides a synthetic route to alkyl fluorides, which are difficult to make by the other methods discussed in this module. In the Swartz reaction, an alkyl chloride or alkyl bromide is heated in the presence of a metallic fluoride such as silver fluoride, mercurous fluoride, cobalt chloride or antimony trifluoride. As shown in the general equation here, the fluoride ion is able to replace the other halogen atom making an alkyl fluoride. 
predict the major monohalo product when chloroethane is reacted with sodium iodide in dry acetone. After you write down a formulae for the reactants, you should be able to recognize the pattern for the Finkelstein reaction. The iodine in sodium iodide replaces the chlorine in chloroethane. Iodoethane and sodium chloride are formed. The sodium chloride precipitates in dry acetone, making it easy to isolate the iodoethane. To make aryl chlorides and aryl bromides, electrophilic substitution of arenes is used. These reactions require iron or iron-3 halides as Lewis acid catalysts. The general reaction is shown here. An aromatic ring such as benzene reacts with diatomic chlorine or bromine. A halogen atom replaces one of the hydrogen atoms to form an aryl halide and a hydrogen halide. Note that the reaction with iodine is reversible and requires the presence of an oxidizing agent such as nitric acid or iodic acid to oxidize the hydrogen iodide formed during the reaction. Chlorine is added to benzene in the presence of metallic iron. Write out a balanced equation showing the monochloro product. Here's the balanced equation. All the hydrogen atoms have been explicitly shown to clarify that one chlorine atom replaces one hydrogen atom on the benzene ring. Hydrogen chloride is the other product. The Sandmeyer reaction provides a synthetic route for the preparation of aryl chlorides from primary aryl amines. The general reaction is shown here. By writing the reaction conditions over the arrow, we can emphasize the changes in the functional groups. Note that an amine group is replaced with a chlorine. It's worth looking at the two steps in greater detail. In the first step of the Sandmeyer reaction, the primary aromatic amine, dissolved or suspended in a cold aqueous mineral acid, is treated with sodium nitrite to make a diazonium salt. In the second step, the diazonium salt is treated with copper 1 chloride to replace the diazonium group with a chlorine atom. Alternatively, to make an aryl iodide, the diazonium salt can be treated with potassium iodide. Test your knowledge with a problem. Predict the major monohalo product for these reactions. Note that the reactant in reaction A is a cycloalkane. But the reactant in reaction B contains an aromatic ring. Reaction A is an addition reaction. Based on Markovnikov's rule, the chlorine atom will attach at the same carbon to which methyl group is attached. Reaction B is a free radical halogenation reaction. A bromine atom replaces a secondary hydrogen atom in the alkyl substituent to the aryl ring. The hydrogens on the benzene ring will not be replaced under these conditions. In this module, we will be studying about the physical properties of haloalkanes and haloarenes. Pure alkyl halides are colorless. For example, methyl bromide or bromoethane is a colorless gas that can be used as a pesticide. However, this use is being phased out due to its toxicity. Historically, it was used as an industrial fire extinguishing agent. Methyl bromide is also known to be an ozone depleting chemical. The alkyl bromides and alkyl iodides may develop a color when exposed to light. For example, 
ethyl bromide turns yellow when exposed to light and air. Many volatile alkyl halides have a sweet smell, but this may not be noticeable unless the concentration is relatively high. Lower alkyl halides, including methyl chloride, methyl bromide, and ethyl chloride, as well as some chlorofluoromethanes, are gases at room temperature. Higher alkyl halides are liquids or solids. You have already studied that the carbon halogen bond in halogen compounds is polar. Due to the greater polarity and higher molecular mass of haloalkanes as compared to the parent hydrocarbons, the dipole dipole and van der Waals forces of attraction are stronger in these compounds. Hence, Haloalkanes have considerably higher boiling points than those of the hydrocarbons of comparable molecular mass. For a given alkyl group, the boiling point increases with increasing atomic weight of the halogen. This is due to an increase in the magnitude of van der Waals forces of attraction with an increase in size and mass of the halogen atom. Thus, among the alkyl halides, alkyl iodides have the highest and alkyl fluorides have the lowest boiling points. For a given halogen, the boiling point increases with an increase in the number of carbon atoms in the chain. This is again due to the increase in the magnitude of van der Waals forces of attraction with an increase in the size of the carbon chain. The boiling points of isomeric haloalkanes decrease with an increase in branching. This is due to the fact that with an increase in branching, the molecule attains spherical shape with less surface area. This results in a decrease in the magnitude of van der Waals forces and hence the decrease in boiling point. Thus, among the isomeric butyl chlorides, the straight chain isomer N-butyl chloride has the highest, while tertiary butyl chloride has the lowest boiling point. The haloalkanes are only very slightly soluble in water. Why? For a haloalkane to dissolve in water, energy is required to break the attraction between the haloalkane molecules and the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. As new attractions between the haloalkane and water aren't nearly as strong as the original hydrogen bonds in water, less energy is released during this process. Thus, haloalkanes are sparingly soluble in water. Haloalkanes do tend to dissolve in organic solvents. The intermolecular attractions that form between haloalkanes and the solvent molecules have similar strengths as the attractions being broken in the separate haloalkane and solvent molecules. Alkyl fluorides and alkyl chlorides are less dense than water. In a mixture with water, Alkyl fluorides and alkyl chlorides would be the upper layer. Alkyl bromides and alkyl iodides are denser than water. In mixtures with water, alkyl bromides and alkyl iodides would separate into the lower layer. Increasing the number of halogen atoms increases the density of the compounds. Aryl halides are polar molecules due to the presence of polar carbon halogen bond, but they are less polar than alkyl halides. Aryl halides have physical properties very similar to alkyl halides. We should make special note of the isomers of dihalobenzenes. If we compare the ortho, para, and meta isomers of dichlorobenzene, we see that their boiling points are nearly the same. 
However, the para isomers have higher melting points. The greater symmetry of para isomers fits better into the crystal lattice, making the para isomers melt at relatively high temperatures. Aryl halides are practically insoluble in water and are denser than water. Here is a problem for you. Arrange these compounds in increasing order of their boiling points. Let's start by drawing the structure for each compound. All the three structures contain one chlorine atom. Since the boiling point increases with an increase in the number of carbon atoms, we should expect one chlorobutane with its four carbon atoms to have the highest boiling point. The other two compounds have three carbon atoms each. But one chloropropane is a straight chain while isopropyl chloride is branched. Branched molecules have lower boiling points. So isopropyl chloride should have the lowest boiling point. One chloropropane is in the middle.